Hey everyone, just now in part two, why missional communities? Perhaps you have heard about what a missional community is and you're wanting to know, well, why would we do this? I'm just gonna run very quickly through three reasons why missional communities. Number one, they're biblical. If you look at the book of Acts, uh, Church life was largely uh, centered around community life, and they ate together daily, they were praying together, they were sharing all things in common. Uh, so we're trying to get back to a more biblical model uh, from an Ellen White perspective as well. Uh, she talks about, she said she was shown by one who cannot err that uh, small companies should be formed as a means of Christian service and mission work. And so I believe it gets back to the Bible model of, of, uh, of life uh, in community as disciples of Jesus. We largely think of, of uh, church these days as a um, program that takes place in a building once a week on Sabbath morning. But to the biblical understanding, uh, the church is God's community of believers who are disciples who are living out the gospel. And that may or may not include buildings, it may or may not include Sabbath morning programs, it certainly includes living life together, doing life together, uh, sharing faith together, and encouraging one another in the gospel and being on mission together. So number one, it's, it's biblical. Number two, it is more evangelistically effective. Um, Evangel evangelical, well, I didn't spell what I was trying to spell, but evangelistic. Uh, uh, if you look especially in America, we like to talk about how it's post-Christian. I would say it's more accurately post-church. Uh, I think we need to, need to identify that clearly uh, because uh, interest in Christ may not be dwindling as much as interest in church. And um, people don't want to come, again, to b church buildings anymore and sit through lifeless, formal programs. Uh, there's exceptions, of course, but by and large, people are wanting to see the gospel lived out in living color. 4% uh, of millennials, just 4% of the millennials in the United States of America will go to a church program a church service on any given weekend in the United States. That is staggering. They're not just going to walk through our doors. Those days are over. So we, we, we need to get out of the mindset that, that if we just put on better programs and we have better music and we have a better preacher and all that, then somehow the people are going to show up. The, the reality is, is we need to go to them. Again, I didn't mean evangelical, though it kind of applies, but evangelistically. Um, we, we, again, we live in a post-church age, and uh, so we just can't put on these programs that are, are gonna attract people. We need to go out to them, and as I mentioned before, the greatest apologetic for the gospel is when people are living in community and living out the gospel. Uh, Ellen White says in Ministry of Healing, of course, that the greatest argument in favor of Christianity is a loving and lovable Christian. Well, how would they know it if we're not out there on mission together? if we just put all our eggs in the church as a program in a building uh, basket. We need to be in community together, out on mission, serving and blessing our cities and neighborhoods. Uh, so we need, to put, we need to be better people, not focus on putting on better programs. Um, so I would say number two, evangelistically, and number three, sociological. The fact of the matter is, is that in order to be disciples of Jesus, and disciples of Jesus are those who are seeking to become more and more and more like Jesus. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You are declaring that you want to become more like Jesus. It, it can't take place, again, in a, a, a big program where we're just sitting uh, next to each other looking straight forward at, at a preacher talk for uh, an hour or so. We need to get involved in each other's lives. We need to get involved and invested and expose ourselves to each other. We need to get vulnerable. And of course, people are people in this day and age want authenticity. And unfortunately, we're not usually giving it to them in the way we do, quote unquote, do church today. And the reality is in order to become more like Jesus, as I've been saying lately, sanctification is a team sport. 
It requires other people. It is not good for man to be alone, Jesus said, in a perfect world even. So we need one another. Uh, we like to quote off in Hebrews 10 where it says we should not forsake the assembling to, of ourselves together. What we fail to see, we often use that as justification for saying you need to come to, to a church service, a traditional church service. And again, if a traditional church service is what excites you, that's fine. The important thing we need to remember is we need to be involved in mission and in community the rest of the week if that's what we're doing on Sabbath morning. But the point is, Hebrews 10, it says, don't forsake the assembling together of yourselves. The purpose of it, right in the verse before, says, because we need to spurn one another in loving good works. And in order for that to happen, we need to be involved in each other's lives and we need to be open to each other. We need to be accessible to one another. And that can't take place in a big uh, program setting where there's 50, 100, 200, 500 people. We need to be one-on-one -on -one with people. We need to be in these smaller groups. And sociologically, we know that it requires smaller groups in order for us to feel really connected and really open and really authentic. So uh, I didn't mention this before, but missional communities are generally uh, best when there's approximately 12 to 25 persons in the group. Uh, if you start getting much bigger than that, you're not going to experience the level of authentic community that you're looking for. And so uh, these, these size of groups allow for that uh, openness and authenticity. So that's why missional communities, number one, they're biblically uh, described, and I would say maybe even prescribed, especially when you look at Ellen White, and she says, she was shown by one who cannot err that this is a, a, a way we should pursue mission. Number two, evangelistically, when we invite people to come into our homes for a meal and experience that community, that's a lot less threatening than having them uh, come to a program that, in a building, some strange building that they have never been to before. And and doing things that they're not used to. Um, I heard one uh, author or pre presenter say that we often re expect the people we're trying to reach to be the missionaries because we, we expect them to come to us and to do the cross-cultural work. I mean, think about it. If, if your life usually consists of sitting down in, in, in front of a TV for three hours a night, or it consists of sitting in a bar for, four hour, for, for a couple hours each night, or it consists of you know, doing these other things, and you ask somebody to come and, and come to a church program, that is completely foreign to their way of doing life. Now, you can make the argument, well, if they're truly open to the gospel, then uh, they should be willing to do it. But, I mean, if, is that the way Christ uh, looked at us? Did he say, well, if they're truly interested in the gospel, they're going to have to try to find a way to come to heaven. No, it's not the way he did it. He came down to us and, and preemptively pursued us. And so missional communities are a way to go out and be the embodied gospel and help people recognize that there's something better than just sitting in front of a TV three hours of the night. But the point is we meet them where they are incarnationally. And of course, sociologically, again, we are called to uh, grow in Christ. And in order for us to do that, we need one another. We need access to one another. And so those are the three reasons why I would suggest missional communities are relevant and important now more than ever.